And then batch seven was like a little it was worse. Like, than that. oh no, like we're yeah. going downhill here. I was worried. I was worried. I'm not gonna lie. But batch eight, he totally redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey and Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's gonna be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, and rant. Hello, and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And tonight we are reviewing the newest edition, I guess second newest edition of the Glenal He 10 year old cash strength batch number eight. Uh, I say second newest because the batch nine like just got released in probably the UK in market. The UK. It was uh, the newest release batch nine was bottled in uh, March just a couple months ago. So it will be a while before we get it, but we just got this one. Yeah. We're a batch behind, but uh, for most people, this is the one you'll see on the shelves currently. And what's interesting is we have the first batch. Yes. Side by side with it. Batch one. So, so we were lucky enough to get this from our boy James. James has always given us authentic. the best stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who represents Glen Allocky. And yeah, so we're going to we're gonna be doing batch one side by side. I've never, this is the first time I've, I've tasted batch one. Yeah. Never had batch one. Never. Obviously, uh, we didn't get into these Glen Allocky 10s until batch three three batch three we have had batch two before we have had batch two um, was solid a friend of a friend in the street had a bottle yes we were lucky enough to sample mm -hmm. um but yeah never had batch one i own it i just always afraid to open it because it's a collector's piece it's a collector's piece yeah. and uh, like I don't know. Visually, it doesn't look like it's going to be as good. Watch it be the best batch. Yeah. So batch eight, um, you know, standard maturation as far as what these Glenelg tens are right now, which is PX, Oloroso, Virgin Oak, and the Rioja. Rioja, yeah. Um, Spanish, wine cast. Spanish wine. The batch one, no, no wine cast. Just the um, well, the, PX. Oloroso, the Oloroso PX and Virgin Oak. Right. Oloroso PX Virgin. Uh, I'm assuming it started in bourbon casks but they don't say that yeah that's a good point right so like it's all finished up yeah because when when Glen Allocky first got bought out by Billy Walker and co mm -hmm. uh, he re-racked everything sure so this is probably yeah. the batch of 10 year old stuff that may have spent a year in the new Oloroso and PX yeah. slash virginal casks the rest, he, knowing the way Billy Walker kind of does things, he probably grabbed like a whole bunch of stuff that's almost 10 years old or going to be 10 years old or whatever, yep. re-racked it, mm -hmm. threw it all in one spot and says, this is where our 10-year-old stuff is going to be. This is what we're going to be pulling from. Yeah. Um, and year one, when they pulled this 10-year-old, it obviously didn't do much because it's sure. super, super pale, right? Yep. Yeah, and we've said it before, you know, re-racking stuff, finishing all their stock, usually that throw up a huge red flag, um, but obviously Billy Walker, one of the most trusted, experienced people in the industry. If anyone's going to do it right, he's going to do it right. Clinically invested, you know, 100 million pounds into their Sherry Cast program, so... Listen, I mean, everybody can say what they want about whatever Glen Allocky was before Billy Walker bought it. But Billy Walker knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He didn't buy Glen Allocky by accident. Yeah. It wasn't just the, the only distillery that was available that he snatched up. Mm -hmm. He tasted their their whiskey, their storage, and was like, yeah, I can do something with this. This yeah. has a good base. Yeah. Right? He has I think. no fool. Let's start with the Glen Allocky 10-year-old batch 8 because that's the one that people might be more interested in hearing about. Uh, so like we said, it is the forecast maturation like you'd see in the previous tens mm -hmm. um i'll say right off the bat this beats out the previous batch for me yeah so by a significant margin yeah um this so is I, this is we're back we're back to really good clown lucky 10 here this might beat out a lot of them mm. when i first sipped this i wasn't expecting it to be this good yeah i'm gonna give it a quick little sip here and before on this channel we have reviewed blind tasted batches three four five six seven I ranked them personally as my favorite batch three. Yeah. Then batch four, then batch five, then batch six. Like went in order. Yeah. Of most favorite with the oldest and least favorite with the newest. This is slotting in somewhere in those earlier batches for me. Yeah, this slots somewhere between three and five. Mm. I think so. Yeah, I think one of our main takeaways with batch seven is there was so much wine cast influence that it was pushing out some other flavors. 
it was just too much of that one type of cask yeah. and we weren't feeling it. Yeah, batch eight, right back to that milk chocolatey like mm. goodness. Um, you still get that Glenallachy characteristic, which is great. And I think this is a cool little experiment here because this is what Glenallachy used to taste like. This is what we started with. Right? Yeah. This is like very little influenced by Billy Walker and yeah. company to what we have here. And I actually really like the batch one. Have you said that yet? I have not. No, I'm going to really focus my attention on this and um, we'll give you some notes and we'll score it and then we'll go to the batch one. But this is like a pure Drake song. Let's just start from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah. A really huge kind of like 180, I'm sure, um, from where they started and where they're at. Yeah. So at the LCBO, you can buy this. It's on the shelf for once. This is a huge thing. Yeah. That the LCBO in Ontario is actually carrying this bottle on the shelf and it's not an outrageous price. It's pretty reasonable it's considering. Fair. It's, it's 130 bucks. 130 bucks. Um, so only about $25 more than you'd find it in other markets. Which when you factor in shipping and tax and whatever it's about else, the same. You're, not, you're not that far off. About the same. Like you're exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so good for the LCBO. Let's give them a point. Yeah. And the old tickaroo. Yeah. It's another <laughs> minus one million four hundred and fifty thousand. That's right. Yeah. But they uh, they did. Oh, let's 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 trash the LCBO for a second. Let's go a little tangent. Oh, okay. Because um, they messed up a rollout of some blue gold spot. spot. Oh, a blue spot, gold spot. Yeah, no, a they, lot of blue spot. Yeah. So and let's they, talk about let's talk about the gold spot first because okay. these are two completely freaking different situations, but they botched them both. Yeah. Right, so Gold Spot. It comes out obviously a super limited, um, super popular. It's a cast strength Irish whiskey that lots of people have their eyeballs on. And it didn't go into a lottery, it didn't go online. It went to the stores, only in the GTA, of course, because that's how they do it. Yeah. And it was a freaking complete shit show. I'm sure I was out of the country, so I was like, I glad that I don't have to run around to multiple stores trying to find this thing. Yeah. They ended up putting it like a, a small amount online they did they realized but, their mistake i'm sure really quickly yeah but it was already yeah too late by then sure. but i mean let's talk about the price of that gold spot for a second mm -hmm. 180 dollars mm. for a seven year old or nine year old whiskey nine year old it is cast strength or it's just a higher abv it's cast 51.4 and there could be older whiskey in there we don't know that yeah that's what they did with the blue spot uh-huh but really like that's a lot of money yeah, 180, and that, as far as like other markets are concerned, this is the highest price you'll probably see for that whiskey. 180 Canadian? I think so. Right? I think so. I don't think, I mean, maybe some companies or stores that have um, the flexibility to increase the price to whatever they want are probably trying to get secondary prices on it. Mm -hmm. But as far as, you know, what it is retail, that's high. Yeah. So that came out a couple months ago, um, and then most recently, the Blue Spot came out, which is the newest edition. Tell me your story about what happened. Yeah, so I bought, there was about 240 left online when I bought it. And then, like, I guess you had mentioned that people were getting emails that day saying, Sorry, you didn't get your your allocation. Uh, you know, better luck next time. No, it wasn't watch. like it wasn't like an allocation. It was like you went online, you yeah. made a purchase. Yeah. It was a one per customer. That's you purchased right. it. It went through. You were charged on your credit card. And then they emailed people. Saying, and then they sorry, emailed you, you back, being like, "Sorry, stock was full. Like, yeah. we're refunding your money. You don't get the bottle." Right. That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, but two weeks later. Two weeks later, you just get an email out of the blue, being like, "Guess what?" There's no more of this. Now, part of me plays conspiracy theorist here a little bit and wonders, they see whiskey, the email whiskey in the six and they're like, mm, <laughs> no, not you. Someone with eyes off the leg is <laughs> just searching good. through like who ordered who, oh yeah, Rob ordered one, yeah. cancel that immediately. Yeah, like I have a couple people that I know in the LCBO that would love to just cancel my order. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's, I mean, that's probably what actually happened. But that's not, Let's compare it to, like, this has happened before. This yeah, has happened yeah, before to many, many people who have gone online, made a purchase with the LCBO with the inventory numbers being very much in stock yeah. and then getting an email notification later being like, your order has been canceled due to stock issues. It's, it's, <sighs> it's out of control how they can't run this properly. There's such a shit show. They make there. billions of dollars a year and they're worse than SipperSocialClub.com. 
Because like at least my inventory, I can set a number, and when that number is exceeded, it says sold out, and you can't buy it anymore. There you go. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand how they run this thing. That's really bad. It's, I mean, what's laughable is that the people running the show, the top fifty people that run the show of the LCBO, are all making over two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, we've talked about. And they're this botching before. everything. Like it's. It's disgusting. It, like get get your best people in the room, and figure this shit out yeah. because like, it's it's Mickey Mouse. Like it it literally is. Hey, we got in five hundred bottles of this. Yeah. How are we gonna sell it? Let's sell it online. Okay, great. Set the limit so that you can't exceed five hundred bottles. I don't understand Done. how that's so hard to do. <laughs> what is the problem here? Oh, that's so hard to do. It can't be that hard to do. It's so. Well, crazy. you just said your your own. Website says sold out when the when the, or do you have to manually go in and do that? No, no, no. It does it by itself. It so that, like, if I have like fifty glasses left and there's you know forty nine have been ordered and one person orders one more and then it's like it's gone and it out. won't let you order it. There you go. So there's no excuse for this. Like the only the only thing that's actually probably happening is it's they, in your cart. It's like a whole bunch of it in the cart and then they go through in the process and then like that much, but like it can't be that because like I've heard this happening many, many times before. Yeah. It always happens. It always happens. No, what I was gonna say is <laughs> they expected to do like a tasting or something of that sort and like, oh wait, we need fifty of these. And bottles. that's it. And that's what we've talked about before. How yeah. they're just like, Oh crap. Yeah. We need to hold back a whole bunch of this yeah. stuff. Wait, we promised because someone from upstairs just yeah. called us and be like, Oh, I didn't know that was going out today. I need six cases. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Okay, the last thirty six orders are cancelled. Right. Right? Which like I said, I had purchased mine when there was two hundred and forty left online. Yeah. So how mine was picked Crazy. to be cancelled. Yeah. Makes no sense. And it's insane. It makes no sense. It's insane. The LCBO is just, it's so frustrating because we pay so much money and they just can't run it properly. Yeah, it's a joke. It's out of control. And that's the problem with having a monopoly in a state-run, province-run liquor store is they can do whatever they want with no repercussion. Okay, so back to this whiskey for a second. Oh, that's right. We're reviewing Glen Alkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... Bravo, maybe, maybe, bravo yeah. on this release. Maybe because it's Easter weekend, but I'm getting a ton of like milk chocolate mm -hmm. on this. Like it's like mini eggs in a glass. This is chocolate milk, like yeah. rich chocolate milk. Are, are Cadbury mini eggs like globally sold or are they, is that just a Canadian yeah, thing? Yeah, so I recently did like a Easter whiskeys and I just picked like some sweet whiskey. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. let's go sweetness because like Easter candy, whatever. Um, and I was like, is Cadbury just like a Canadian thing? And no, obviously it's UK. Cadbury is like a UK oh, brand. Yeah, UK of course. Brand. Okay. But um, I don't think that the US gets a lot of their product. They might get some of it, but they don't. They don't get all of it. They don't get the uh, mini eggs. I'm pretty uh, sure they don't. I don't think they get Kinder Surprise. So we get the best stuff. Arguably. Well, Cadbury yes. mini eggs are the best mini egg there is. Like Cadbury mini nothing... eggs are fucking crack. They're yeah, so good. There's there's no like chocolate egg that's better than the Cadbury mini egg. Like mm -hmm. people argue, oh, the Hershey's is better. No, absolutely wrong. not. You're wrong. That, absolutely this, not. this is not a matter of opinion. No, no, no <laughs> There's no. a fact that, yeah. no. It's... And like to our American listeners, like I don't think that you guys get the Cadbury mini eggs no. in the US, unfortunately. I don't know if there's an American equivalent. Mm -hmm. And if you know, let us uh, know down below. I'm sure there is because there's all those like no name brand versions of like the mini eggs. I'm sure someone's tried to replicate it. It's, yeah. They're so good. But it's it's not like replicatable. It's just, it's highly, it's, if you don't know, it's like, it's a very good quality chocolate wrapped in a candy shell. Yeah. But they do it, it's like, it was like, oh, that's an, that's an M&M. Like, no, 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 no. This is like way, way better. There's something special about the, the chocolate, like you, the flavor of that chocolate. I agree. And you just, you get hit with this sweetness that just like complements it super well. Yeah. Um, they do something magical with those. Yeah. Something different's happening. And maybe it's like a hit of like extra vanilla or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah. It's something crazy. Someone from the UK, like probably some British person was like, Actually, Cadbury is like <laughs> a very British company. I'm like, of course it is. The Cadbury sounds very British. Yeah, that makes and I'm sense. sure it originated there because yeah. they they do sweets, great. Yeah, there, right? absolutely, absolutely. Charlie and Chocolate Factory was not based in America True. or Canada, right? What, are they Cadbury? No, no. But it was like that's UK. I 
want an umpa lumpa now! Can it, you nit? Yeah. Right? True. Yeah. How how much did you crave chocolate when you watched that movie for mm. the first time when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. Or read the book? Yeah, the original, like the old school Charlie and Chocolate Factory movie was like a staple yeah. in your childhood, right? I, I read I read the book in elementary school. The book apparently is kind of crazy, isn't it? It's yeah. It's like it's more hardcore. It's a little darker. It's like people get chopped up and, and grind it up and but, no, die. You yeah, you don't they really, die more serious deaths. You don't go into deaths. that detail, but yeah, it's like yeah. You, just, like you just lose people forever. Mr. Wonka, they won't really be burned in the furnace, will they? Hmm. Well, I think that furnace is lit only every other day. So they have a good sporting chance, haven't they? Right. right. Um, before Johnny Depp, you know, completely botched it, um, the old school one was a great, great movie. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the clown key. So, yeah, you're right. Like, the Mini chocolate eggs. notes in here are amazing. Mini eggs. Um, you know, I'm not getting overwhelmed by the Rihoha casks. No. They're very much balanced this is in the, this one. This is one of the most balanced of the batches I so agree. far. And, like, yeah. I kind of brought this up um, in that last review that I did with the Whiskey Sponge Glenlivet, mm -hmm. like, that's a $300 bottle, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's a single cask, but I'm buying this all day over that. Yeah. Like, I'm not spending 300 bucks when I can spend $130 and yeah. get this quality. Mm -hmm. Why would I waste my money? Yep. You know what I mean? So, that's yeah. fantastic. What I think, you? like, bravo to Billy Walker and Glen Alecky for doing this, because, like, we were on a slippery slope here. Yes. It was like batch seven, we were like, nervous. oh dear, batch seven, like it's... Batch six was just okay, like it was, it was like, you know, like an 85-ish, 86, yeah. and then batch seven was like a little worse like, than that. like, oh no, like we're yeah. going downhill here. I was worried. I was worried, I'm not going to lie, but batch eight, he totally redeemed yeah. himself. <laughs> <laughs> can, um, we, can we get one of those? Yeah, I'll put it in here. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, like if you look at the production numbers, like how many they were releasing, like, right, the numbers of releases, like, you know, like 12,000, 15,000, 20,000, right. and now we're up to like 75,000 bottles being released. It's like, okay, well, you're really pushing the envelope here yeah. with um, with these releases. We don't know how much this is, numbers-wise. Numbers-wise, as as I would say it's, it's creeping up to like the 80,000. I would say it's going to be more than batch seven was. Which was what? Because the LCBO has this. Yeah. And they don't buy stuff that it's just, you can only get a couple of cases of, they want to buy a lot. So. Yeah, the LCBO probably got 2,000 of these bottles, mm -hmm. right? So if they got 2,000, and they probably got them at a good price, Right? I don't know. This badge one is really good. How good is that? Really, really How good. How shocked? I mean, this is what I'm saying about Glen Alki. Like, people are like, well, it's Glen Alki. It's probably not very good. And we're talking about... <laughs> this is a comment that I always like... Now, I've learned to just not respond. <laughs> when <laughs> when it's something that I just... I really, <laughs> like, the, the raging Rob wants to come out. Yeah. I just... I don't respond. Yeah. But it was like... Wait, we're talking about Glen Alecky, the one that Billy Walker bought that he had to re-rack re everything because yeah. it was terrible quality whiskey? I'm like, but he, if that was true, he wouldn't have bought it. Yeah. Like, there's how many distilleries in Scotland that are mothballed right now? Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, why the hell would he buy a distillery that sucked? The, the base of Glen Alecky is excellent, in my opinion, and that's why it's making these ridiculously good whiskeys because yeah. like this is Oloroso on PX and Virgin Oak. How long do you think? Six months? There's older whiskey in this. I guarantee you there's older whiskey than 10 in here. There's 15 and maybe even like 18 year old whiskey in this. It's completely different than this batch eight. So much different. Yeah, but what, what remains consistent in Glenalki is this mineral like almost like a powdery chocolate mm. finish on everything. Yeah. It's the staple on all Glenalki. Yeah. And it's there, it's present in everything. It's like it's like imagine like crushing, like cleaning two 
rocks and then crushing cocoa with it. Right. That's kind of like the, the right. sensation that I'm yeah. getting. You, know you get what a mean? little bit of rock in there. Yeah. yeah. That's a and good rate estimation. Yeah. Like, delicious. This this batch one is. If I would have bought batch one, I would have been very happy with it. Absolutely. Very this happy. Is great. With it. Uh, I love batch one. Yeah, and I, Again, I think you're right. I think there there has to be older whiskey in this because one hundred percent. Because it didn't spend enough if this time tastes, the other stuff. This tastes way older than than the batch eight. You're and, right. And every other batch as well. Like I'm saying this is like this is fifteen year old whiskey in here for sure. Maybe yeah. eighteen year old. So that's batch one right there, right? So it's fifty seven point one percent ABV. Well, how does that drink to you? That drinks like 50. It drinks, yeah, it drinks 48. I was going to say it drinks 48. Yeah. Yeah. And it's delicious. But like, think about it. Look how light and characteristic this is, right? Yeah. Are we dealing with like refill PX, refill Oloroso casks? Maybe. Are those older? Maybe the, maybe the, the base stuff in this was re, like refill casks. Yeah. hundred percent. Because it, but like multiple use 100 percent. yeah right? like because look how maybe, light it is yeah maybe even multiple fill casks yeah that like, are older like four or five times because 100 percent. in order to get that you can only either get that in like a twice used bar like bourbon barrel or like a five times used sherry cask yeah you know I, mean? I mean we've seen second fill sherry casks that are darker than first fills. yeah darker than this eight year this batch eight right here, yeah right so that's that's it's really good mm -hmm. it's really good mm -hmm. it's a different whiskey of course like it's completely different than it than it is now yeah yeah and then going back to this eight now i mean so much different on the nose even like this nose now i'm getting like a little bit of that really nice matchstick mm -hmm. i'm getting a little bit of like this like it's funny you said that this barrel it... char matchstick kind of note to as it. soon as i brought it to my nose after taking a bunch of sips yes. out of that i got that barrel char yeah that i didn't get before yeah that barrel char maybe coming from the virgin oak yeah they're retrying the cask either way you're getting this like this barrel char note yeah and that's one that makes it so so nice yeah i'm so happy honestly like i was so happy with this when we first opened this going out we tried it here i'm like okay yes better than Back seven yeah, yeah. right because yeah. like if this was going to be worse than seven it almost like kills it yeah. like it kills the line it does like, am i gonna buy a batch eight now like yeah. it's continuously going like i don't well, know even i like i wasn't in love with six and then when we had seven i'm like mm, that that's worse than six yeah so then remember like i bought a bottle of the eight and i'm like i'm just gonna stash it yeah because I don't know if I want to drink a bottle. Mm -hmm. And then ever since mm -hmm. we opened that, that yeah. night, your bottle, yeah. I've been looking to buy another bottle because yeah. it's good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it is really good. Where is this fitting in for you? What's the score for the batch eight? So it's hard because when we did that blind, I expected to pick batch three as my number one. Mm -hmm. I expected to pick batch five as my number two, four as my number three, and so on and so forth. I picked batch five as my number one, I think. Yeah. Did I not? Yep. And then three was two, four was three, mm -hmm. um, and then six and seven. Yep. This could, like I said, it's hard to do without doing it blind, but I think this could easily be, uh, you know, just after three for me. So like five, three, eight, four. Yeah. And I think like for me, I did three, four, five blind before and I picked four twice, but they're all very, very close. Yeah. I think for, for us, we agree that three, four, five are very, very good. Absolutely. And then six, seven are, are outliers, yep. especially seven. Yep. But this batch eight is going to fit in that category with a three, four, five. Yeah. Right. It's going to be around there. Yeah. And I enjoyed, like, like you said, I really enjoyed three, four and five. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this one could leapfrog one of those. Yeah. It's very possible if we did another blind. We'd we have to do them side by side to really get a good judge of it because it's been a while since we tried those ones. Yeah. But I agree. This is like, this is the best, this is gonna be in the mix of like the best batches for Clan Alki 10. Imagine, it's definitely better than six. It's definitely better than seven. Imagine there's like 20 year old whiskey in this. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I am, for batch one, I am not, I would not be surprised if there's a decent amount of casts in here that are 18 years old. 
I guarantee you there's 15 year old casts in here. Are they gonna get to see the, they'll get to see the 18 year old shootout that we did after this video, probably. Cause yeah. this is not gonna be very much editing or whatever else. Coming out after this, we do an 18 year old shootout. 10 18 year old Scotch whiskeys. Right. Semi-blind. 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 And we're not gonna reveal what happened, but there's a big shocker in that one. There's a big shocker in that. I was, I was surprised. Me too. I was very, very surprised. Yeah, I did not too. call what was gonna happen. Yeah. Um, what are you gonna score? Are we gonna score both of these? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's throw, let's throw out some numbers. Even though this is like our, you know, only our second go around with the batch eight, our yeah. first go around with the batch one. But yeah, let's, let's throw some, batch let's one. throw out some um, early numbers for these. I'll go first. Batch yeah. eight. 88 out of 100. 88 is where I would tell you to go out and buy this without even trying it. I'm okay. that confident that um, that you'll like it, especially if you like the Glenelaki 10 range. If you were a 3, 4, 5 fan, um, batch eight was fits right into that category. And if you tried seven and it was the only one you ever tried, you're like, I don't know. I would definitely go batch eight. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm 88 as well. I was thinking 88. I'm gonna stick with that as well. Um, it's funny, after you take a sip of the one and go back to the the batch eight, that's when you get the barrel char. Yeah. That's when you get that, yeah. like, that, that virgin oak influence. But it's not until you yeah. do that, right? Yeah. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Um, this is a cool experiment. This is really, really cool. I, I, if you guys have a batch one, I highly recommend you, you drink these side by side. Um, yeah, I'm going to go 88 as well. Yeah. And, and batch one for me, like it has this like velvetiness. It's like, it's the viscosity just seems like it, it hits your palate and sticks to it more so. Yeah. Um, you almost get this like honey kind of sweetness to this one. Yeah. Um, it's very, very good. Yeah. Knowing Billy Walker, there's, I think you're bang on. I think you hit the nail on the head. There's definitely older whiskey in here. This is like almost a 90 for me. We got to Yeah. We got to talk to our boy James and be like, you need to ask Billy Walker how old yeah. some of this whiskey is in here. Cause yeah. like, I guarantee you there's 15 and I wouldn't be surprised if there's 18 year old whiskey. And yeah, this is like, this is 89, uh, for me a point higher than this batch for sure. But like so good batch yeah. one is so good. The thing is, is when batch one came out, it sat on the shelf forever. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until batch three came out that batch one and two sold out. Yeah. Because batch three came out this darker, darker. Yep. And people were like, oh my God, this must be good. And this was a time when people were like, dark whiskey, let's get it's it. It's the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm guilty. Yeah. I, I know I am. I'm not, I'm no, I'm no better. I do it all the time. But this is a testament to just like, that goes to show you. A whiskey that looks like this can be better than a whiskey that looks like this. 100%. And that's not knocking this by any means. No. That's a great whiskey as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, uh, if, I mean, this is my initial, I'm always a little bit more excited about a whiskey the first time I try it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second time I try it is like the reality test for me. Um, so for now I'm going to stick with my 90, but that'll probably maybe go down a point. Right. Yeah, and I, yeah, I mean, I think we're right there. We're really close on both of these. Um, we prefer batch one. I mean, what a crazy, what a crazy uh, side by side. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, so still good. go out and grab this batch eight because it's delicious. And okay, we should we should say for the price and everything else, it's not like you were getting a bad deal for the batch six or seven. You know what I mean? True. Like, like that's what we what, said before. Right. We just said that before. Yeah. You know what? It's like, sure, it's not our favorite batch, but like right. for 120 bucks or right. whatever it was, it's still really good whiskey. Yeah, and I think I think we did say in those other videos, you know, it's it's too bad that it's being compared to other Glenallachies. We had a high standard. For exactly. It. We had right? a really high standard yeah. for it for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. being compared to quality Glenallachies, mm -hmm. which exceeded our expectations. So obviously, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you put it up against a Glendronic cast strength and it's probably going to smash it. I don't right? like Glendronic cast strength. I don't either. Has there been a good batch that you've had? I've never had a good batch. I can't batch. remember a good batch of that. No, even it's like the drank so hot yeah. and like bad. To, to Matten uh, cast strengths, the 
Lin Goin, Cash Jenks, all like failed. just basic. Yeah. Right? So that's why like the, that batch six and seven destroy those for around the same price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's what like even like your newer like abunas, they're not yeah. as good as like those that batch six and batch seven. So take that with a grain of salt because Although we didn't love Batch 6 and 7, they're still better than a lot of what's available for the same price. Agreed. Agreed. So, yep. Yep. That's it. Let us know in the comments down below. Um, Glalki 10-year-old, Cash Strength. What batch is your favorite that you've tried so far? Um, and definitely go out and get this Batch 8. Yeah. 100% get it. Absolutely. It is worth it. Um, you know, even if you're paying LCBO prices, which are still actually pretty solid. Yeah then uh, definitely worth the price, for sure. This is gonna be great with a cigar. Ooh. Nice weather coming. Don't, that's te- gonna be, don't tease me. That's a, I'm telling you. <laughs> Do not tease me. That's that's a legit thing right there. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And thank you so much, James, for giving us this, this uh, batch one. The batch one, yeah. Thank you, James. Thank you all the time. You're the man. And uh, we should see what the secondary market price is on the batch one, because I would pay for sure double retail for that. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't think it's too much, but I don't really know. I haven't been paying attention. If it's double retail, I'm buying a bottle. Yeah. If it's more than that, no. Yeah. But if it's double, if I'm gonna pay like two twenty, I'm in for it. Yeah. I'm in for that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good bottle. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment, uh, like the video, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Guys. Cheers.